Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today on Around Kansas, join us for a story about Fort Zara and its history. Then join us for a story about the turkey vulture, their habitat and habits. Next, we'll have a poem from Ron Wilson, and we'll end with a look at the life and legacy of Steve Brody. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Well, hello again. It's Wednesday. I'm Frank, and this is the show called Around Kansas. I'm here in Topeka, and Deb's out in uh, western Kansas. Hi, Deb. Hope you're having a great time out there. Anyway, here we are most of the way through the merry month of May. And, of course, Memorial Day weekend is coming up. And it's a time when people like to get out and do things and travel and all of that. And so hopefully you will uh, travel around Kansas. Uh, that's kind of what this show is about, uh, showing you people, places, and things that make Kansas a great place to live, work, play, and go visit. Um, the Kansas highway system, you may be aware that uh, Kansas uh, had a president, and his name was Dwight Eisenhower. And during World War II, he noticed uh, that the Audubon in Germany was a great idea. So he proposed that we have an interstate system here in the United States. And of course, in the mid 50s, why the interstate system, uh, Highway uh, I 70, began in the state of Kansas. And uh, so, anyway, it has become quite the thing. Anyway, did you know, though? that uh, Kansas had a little bit of history with the highway system uh, in the United States. Back in the 1920s, uh, highways were being built uh, that were coast to coast, interstate highways. Well, uh, Highway 24 came up to the border of Kansas and stopped. Uh, there was nice pavement up to there, and then from then on, it was uh, dirt and gravel roads, in fact, the highways and the roads at that time, even though there were cars, um, well, really were just kind of carved out. Um, they were agreed to by the farmers so that they could get their goods to, uh, to market. Well, the thing is, is they had tree stumps in them and <laughs> they, were, they were pretty um, uh, treacherous to, uh, to traverse. But anyway, uh, farmers didn't want to give up the, their land to right of way for the for the uh, for the highway. Well, eventually the legislature said, "No, we've got to do this because this is what is going to be progress in the United States." So Kansas joined the uh, the uh, inter not the interstate highway, but the U.S. highway system at that time. So highways 24 and 40 came through the state of Kansas, and Highway 40. Uh, was named the Victory Highway at one time in uh, Topeka, Kansas, along 6th Street, which was Highway 40 at one time. There was um, an eagle there on a pedestal, and that was to celebrate the Victory Highway from, from World War I. Uh, that, that statue now has been moved over in uh, Gage Park to uh, 10th Street, but that was the reason that eagle was there uh, originally, those eagles were along the route all the way out to California at one time. So there you go. History lesson for today. And, uh, of course, the historian amongst us is really Deb. And speaking of Deb, she's going to talk about vultures today. <laughs> yeah, amongst other things. But anyway, it should be an interesting story about vultures. Uh, I've got to say, the other day, my wife came home and said, you know what? There was a squirrel that got run over down the street, and there was a 
turkey vulture there. And I said, well, yeah, they must be able to um, be able to either see or smell carrion from miles away. <laughs> anyway, there was a turkey vulture in our neighborhood. That's kind of scary because they're big, ugly birds, but they serve a purpose. Okay, what else? Let's see. Uh, well, we just have some great stories today and hope that you have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend and then we'll see you Wednesday after that with uh, some more great stories about the state of Kansas. So anyway, stay tuned and take a look at this. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Welcome to Kansas Gateway to... The attack was unexpected and the troopers unprepared. Lulled into a false sense of security by the sight of Union uniforms, General James Blunt and his men never imagined the men that galloped toward them would be their undoing. When the shots rang out, the surprised Union troops scrambled to return fire. With the fog of war settling around them, Major H. Zara Curtis fought until unhorsed. Taken prisoner, the son of General Samuel R. Curtis died at the hands of William Clark Quantrell's men at the Baxter Springs Massacre in October 1863. Newspaper accounts reported it was the largest funeral procession ever seen in his hometown of Keokuk, Iowa. By 1864, General Curtis was in command of Union forces in Kansas. Charged with protecting Kansas from Confederate invasion, Curtis also had to face the threat of Native American attacks in the western regions of the state. To aid in the protection of western Kansas, a camp was established 30 miles east of Fort Larned along Walnut Creek. Constructed of earthen dugouts and tents on a high creek bank, the post initially received its orders from Fort Larned's commanding officer. Called Camp Dunlap originally, the general renamed the outpost Fort Zara in honor of his slain son. It later became an independent post with substantial limestone buildings. As the Civil War was winding down and the Indian Wars were heating up, the 2nd Colorado Cavalry was stationed at Fort Zara. By 1869, the post was deemed obsolete. An historic marker and picnic tables offer a wayside retreat near the location. For more information, stop in the Barton County Museum nearby in Great Bend. Fort Wallace was the fightingest fort in the West. Fossils, Indians, soldiers, scouts, wagons, trails, pioneers, stories. Discover the story of Fort Wallace and the people who served here, the people who fought here, the people who settled here. Wallace County, where the past is present. This is one of my favorite bits that I make. The name I give this bit is a derby bit. I had a roan head horse that was running through the bridle with the chain bit, and I made this bit here. It, it, it really worked good on that horse. I sent this bit to Donnie McNeese, who breaks in cattle for Jeff Smith and Ike's Cox. And I said, ride this bit on a lot of horses, see how you get along with it. They did. He said, bull, that's really a good bit. Fits a lot of horses. Then I give this bit to my good friend, Brent Wright, who I make bits for. And I said, see how this bit will work on a reining horse. I call him up a couple months later. I said, Brent, how you get along with that bit? And he said, good. He said, you don't need it right this minute, do you? And I said, no. He said, good, because I'm down here in Texas, and I just want a big fraturity riding that bit. And when Brent got home, he gave me the buckle that he won the fraturity with. I'm, I'm really proud of that buckle 
that Brent Wright give it to me and also that he got along so good with my bit. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Buffalo Bill Cody earned his legendary title in Oakley. Bring the family and come celebrate Oakley's pioneering history and unique geography at two sites, the Buffalo Bill Cultural Center and the Fick Fossil Museum. Cody's statue marks his achievements and welcomes visitors to the Cultural Center. The Fick Fossil Museum houses world-class fossils and artifacts. You'll find Oakley at the hub of U.S. Highways 83 and 40 and I-70. Stop for the legend. Stay for the day. Discover Oakley. This segment brought to you by the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center in Oakley. In Mike Cross's classic song, The Lord Will Provide, otherwise known as the Chicken Hawk Song, the buzzard and the hawk are sitting on a fence by the henyard, hungry. The impatient hawk keeps prodding the buzzard to grab a chicken, and the wise old buzzard points to the sky and replies, The Lord Will Provide. Finally, the chicken hawk can stand it no longer. He swoops down to steal a chicken, when suddenly the farmer appears with his shotgun and dispatches the hawk. The patient buzzard looked heavenward and said, I told you the Lord would provide. Who has ever seen a buzzard in a hurry? Even if you drive up on them during a meal on the highway, they don't hurry away. They just lazily raise their wings or saunter off, unconcerned, confident that the Lord will provide. Around Kansas, no matter what part of the state you find yourself, you will find the turkey buzzard, fully employed ridding the roadways of carrion. It is a noble profession. The turkey buzzard would not be considered beautiful, especially close up. It is a face only a mother turkey buzzard could love. But they are impressive creatures with wingspans up to six feet. They appear to exert so little energy, rarely flapping their wings and instead gliding on thermal drafts. They do not have a lilting song because their vocal cords are not like other birds. As a result, they hiss and grunt. Dr. Jake once sought refuge for the night in an old barn where a buzzard family roosted. The baby squawked into the night until the mom squawked more loudly and shushed the baby. Buzzards are communal creatures and roost together in large groups. I observed a tree full of vultures in a campground once. They arrived at the same time each evening to sleep and arose the next morning as if the alarm clock had gone off and they were all headed to work. They were fascinating. Yes, turkey buzzards are interesting creatures, and it turns out buzzard is not an accurate name for them. As scientists have studied birds more closely, they believe that the turkey vulture is more closely related to the stork and the ibis, and thus have differentiated between Old World and New World vultures. Like their stork relatives, New World vultures have very weak feet, which is why the stork carries new babies in its beak rather than clutching them with its claws. This deficiency isn't a problem, since the turkey vulture doesn't grasp prey like a hawk or an eagle. No, the vulture's most valuable asset is its keen sense of smell. The turkey vulture would be the most popular guy at frat parties. When threatened, it regurgitates to disgust its attacker. Anyone but Bluto and Otter from Animal House fraternity fame would be repulsed. There are more than four and a half million turkey vultures going to work every morning, cleaning the roadsides with little praise or appreciation and no orange cones or speed zones to protect them. Next time you see them at work, instead of going ooh, go ah, and like the turkey vulture, work every day confident that the Lord will provide. <laughs> Welcome to Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center, right here in Oakley, Kansas on I-70 at exit 76. I-70, after all, is America's Main Street, and we're right here on Main Street for you. 
now that I'm an Oakley resident, I still come in almost every day. And I sit and listen to the conversations of the people around me. You know, the guys who are talking about the big elf they just bagged or the folks who are taking their kid to college for the first time. People just traveling up and down the highway. Real people, just like you and me. And they find just what I find here, real people to serve them. There's history, there's scenery. We hope you'll stop and see us soon. Welcome to Oakley. Hi, I'm Kim Mandarin with Hardy Insurance. I'm here to help you with all of your farm and ranch needs. When it comes to protecting your operation and your family, you need a name you can trust at a price you can afford. Call me today or visit hardyaviationins.com. All over the country, more and more communities are making the change to biodiesel made from U.S. soybean oil. And the decision continues improving the health and welfare for millions of Americans while adding billions to our national economy. With nearly 100 years of broadcasting excellence, Wren Radio is now live on the internet playing hit songs of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Join Jack Diamond, Matt Collins, Les Glenn, Frankie C., Antonio Barber, Wings Callahan, and the real Don Steele for some of the best music ever recorded. Hear it at WrenDigitalMedia.com or get the Wren Oldies Radio app in Play Store or App Store. And tell Alexa, good times and great oldies on Wren Internet Radio. Welcome to the Jerry Thomas Gallery and Collection, where we showcase my renowned frontier military and Native American artifacts. Behind me you see a touch of fall. We put together not only the beauty of Micah High Walking, who is the first graduate of West Point of the Northern Cheyenne people and a dear friend, but also a Hudson's Bay blanket that I have here in the gallery. The unique opportunity that I was able to have was we unveiled this painting and surprised Micah at Custer Battlefield, a true honor. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas Farmers. Some years ago, I was leafing through an old issue of Time Magazine, and I came across uh, an article that caught my eye. It was headed, The Animal That Changed History. This poem is entitled, Horses Made History. A national magazine reported for all to see what it called the animal that changed history. The animal which provided this historic force was that wonderful critter which we call the horse. In the history of man across centuries of time, we find the contributions of the species equine. Columbus brought horses into the brand new world when he landed at Hispaniola with the Spanish flag unfurled. Hernando Cortez came to Mexico in 1519 and conquered the natives with power not yet seen. He brought Spanish-blooded horses into this new land. Across the new continent, they would breed and expand. Those horses gave native tribesmen a whole new front with amazing new power to roam and to hunt. The horse transformed the Plains Indian lives, helping tribes to move and get food to thrive. Those capable riders on their horses' back gave warriors dominant strength with which to attack. For the explorers and cowboys of later years, the horse enabled the conquering of the frontier. So let's all recognize through this discourse the historic contribution of the American horse. I'm Scott Thelman, and this is Juniper Hill Farms. Even though my parents weren't farmers, they bought this beautiful farm north of Lawrence in 1999. In 2010, I started growing vegetables on this land. Today, Juniper Hill Farms sells produce to wholesalers, grocers, and restaurants, and is focused on growing high-quality food that everyone can afford. Watch my story and the stories of other young Kansas food producers at kansaslivingmagazine.com slash meetafarmer. Earlier in my life, I rode bucking horses in rodeos, and my shoulders took such a beating, and that was probably the reason for having several previous surgeries on both shoulders. About a year ago, I decided that I didn't want to have another surgery, and so I contacted Kansas Regenerative Medicine, took their treatment process. It was relatively pain-free. Now, after eight months, my shoulders have healed to the point where I think I'm probably 90 to 95 percent of normal. It takes a couple of months to start to see results and feel real progress. That continued to increase gradually until now at approximately eight months. And I'm extremely pleased. I've got full range of motion. I can lift weights. I can throw. 
I can do uh, a lot of things that uh, I couldn't do without a lot of pain previously. So I'm, I'm tickled to death with the results and I'd recommend this process to anyone. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas, we work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yet we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'll be glad to answer and work with you. Been brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. There are lots of fans of classic television westerns and films that will recognize the face of Steve Brody. He even had a recurring role in the TV show Wyatt Earp. But unlike Wyatt himself, Steve had an even stronger Kansas connection. He was born in Kansas. That invaluable encyclopedia of film, the International Movie Database, reports that Steve was born John Doherty Stevens on November 25, 1919, in El Dorado. Raised in Wichita, he dropped out of school and raced cars, boxed, and worked on oil rigs to get by. He initially entertained a criminal law career, but that interest quickly wore off. He had a passion for acting and found early work in summer stock, changing his stage name to Steve Brody. A move to New York did not pay off, but a subsequent move to Los Angeles did. He broke into films after being spotted by an MGM talent scout in a Hollywood theater production entitled Money Girls. Loaned out for his first uh, film, Universal's Ladies Courageous, Brody appeared in a few tough guy bit parts in such MGM films as 30 Seconds Over Tokyo and Anchors Away before he was dropped. It wasn't long before he was signed by RKO, and it was with this studio that his reputation as a heavy in westerns grew, with such roles as Notorious Outlaws Bob Dalton in Bad Man's Territory and Cole Younger in Return of the Bad Men. In between those two pictures were strong roles, uh, strong roles in film noir classics, including the leading role in Desperate. A hard-living, hard-drinking actor, Brody married actress Lois Andrews in 1946, but the couple divorced. He married Barbara Savitt, and the union produced son Kevin Brody two years later. Kevin later became a producer-director. Interest in Brody eventually waned at the studio, and his contract was not renewed. Freelancing elsewhere, he appeared as a lead in Rose of the Yukon and another classic film noir, Armored Car Robbery, and also earned good starts, uh, parts in Home of the Brave and Lady in the Iron Mask as the Musketeer Athos. A familiar presence on 1950s and 60s television, he worked on such crime series as Public Defender, Hawaiian Eye, Surfside Six, Perry Mason, and such Western series as The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp, The Lone Ranger, Adventures of Wild Bill Hickok, Laramie, Sugarfoot, Maverick, Rawhide, Gunsmoke, and even Ozzie and Harriet and the Beverly Hillbillies. Brody's later years were marred by drinking arrests. In the 1970s, he made sporadic appearances, including a lead in the campy, low-budget horror film, The Giant Spider Invasion. He also provided voice work in commercials and showed up at nostalgia conventions. In 1973, Brody married a third time to Virginia Hefner, and they had a son, Sean. Suffering from esophageal cancer and heart problems, Brody died at age 72 on January 9, 1992 at a West Hills, California hospital. Well, that's it for this week. I'm Frank and she's Deb out there. And we'll see you somewhere 
around Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream.